This is a huge disease. It has impact both on hospitalisations, patients' wellbeing, cost to the community. The numbers are there. It's a massive growth area and we need to tackle it head on. Uh, recent data, for example, has suggested as many as one in ten people who are over 65 will at some stage manifest heart failure. Heart failure, in its simplest term, means that your pump, your heart, is not working well enough to get blood to all the tissues in the body that it needs. Heart failure is becoming an increasing reason for admission to hospital. And because of the chronic nature of the condition, in almost all cases, these patients are often liable to be readmitted at some stage. John's a 68-year-old man who first presented to us with a heart attack. That was complicated by a cardiac arrest when the heart stopped. I was up there working, I was getting these pains in the chest, and I thought, oh, it's indigestion or something. I met him in the driveway and said, are you OK? Oh, I don't feel very well. I've got chest pains. I'm going to bed. No, you're not going to bed. So she threw me straight in the car down to the hospital. They said, he's not having a heart attack. And the next minute, the surging pain come back and I dropped dead on the gurney. He's certainly been left with a damaged heart, but despite that, he's really doing pretty well with his heart failure. I think he's an amazing man to have got through what he's got through. One of the ways I feel a big burden is on Nola, that a lot of her friends have got caravans and going away. I can't do it. And when we go away, she's always worried about where's the nearest hospital in case things go wrong. It works pretty good, the heart. It doesn't pump really well. The, the lungs are not the best in the world. I suppose that's because smoking for a long time. In hospital, education is really one of the key components of heart failure care. So helping them understand what their symptoms are then allows us to help them to know when to seek out medical attention. If they're feeling dizzy and lightheaded, if they're feeling short of breath, if they've got the swelling in the legs and ankles, if they're feeling any palpitations, a racing heartbeat, these are all symptoms that transpire and indicate that there's fluid retention in the body. And it's all about getting the patient to take responsibility for the condition and to learn about what they need to do so that they can be in the driver's seat. So it is very important that these that there's a good long-term management plan involving not just the hospital but also the local doctor and the community and be seen in the light of an ongoing uh, permanent uh, care situation. Heart failure is incredibly common in general practice. It's more common with the ageing population. But in terms of diagnosing earlier, I think we need to ask the question of people, are you getting breathless when you're doing things at home more than you used to before? Are you getting breathless when you're walking around the shops? So perhaps if we do pick up people a little bit earlier, they're more inclined to change their lifestyle with our support. The important thing we would like patients to realise is that their heart failure is treatable and manageable. So a lot of the symptoms they experience can be treated, they can live a good quality of life and they can get access to good support. Heart failure is already at epidemic proportions. We don't need any more figures to tell us that this is a disease that is one, of enormous concern now. Two, is an enormous concern in terms of hospitalisation. Three, it's an enormous concern in terms of cost. And if you want a fourth thing, just look five, 10, 15, 20 years ahead. This is a problem that we have to tackle.